Today we're going to be talking about what may be the most exciting, uh, highest anticipated tool release from Festool in recent years, and that is the CSC SIS50 sustainer table saw. Now I want to do this video a little bit different than the other tool related videos that I've done featuring Festool products. And what I mean by that is I've already had a lot of questions about this tool. And quite honestly, I just think there's a lot of really cool features and those are the things that I wanna show you. And I also wanna show you the stuff that I know you wanna know, which is how clean of a cut does it make? How accurate is it out of the box? Um, is it easy to use? So let's get into it. As you saw in the beginning of the video when I took the lid off, underneath the lid is actually where everything gets stored. And you can actually break down the saw even a little bit more, including the, like the fence basically. And that'll store in here as well, but you don't have to take that off. Um, but basically everything that you need to store is right here in the lid of this sustainer. And if all put back together properly, it fits very well. You get a little bit into setup and just how easy it is. This little latch right here, you just push that. And now your extension table folds up. And then I'm able to move the fence to the left and to the right and lock it down. Now looking at it from this side, you'll see a few different things. It's got uh, two five amp hour lithium batteries. That's what it runs off of. We have our main power button right here to actually turn on the machine since it is powered by battery. Unlocking this latch right here gives you access to the sliding table that is equipped on this saw. And then unlocking this latch right here is what allows you to place your miter gauge. Now it is locked in. That's how it gets locked. And then you're able to adjust the fence in relation to the blade. Now, one question that I've already gotten asked a lot has been just how big is this saw when it's fully set up? So I'm gonna give you actual measurements from the sliding edge of the sliding table across you're at just over 22 inches and the table depth, including this portion right here with the scale is just under 17 and a half inches. The max rip capacity that you're gonna have on this is 11 inches if you're using the fence. And I do not have a definitive cross cut capability in terms of length on either side because that really is gonna be determined off the support that you have available. So it's kind of endless from that perspective. But cross cut width, we'll just say, this is not gonna be an exact measurement because you can fiddle with the miter gauge a little bit and get some more out of it, but you're looking at about 15 and a half inches. Now, if I move the miter gauge to its farthest back position where it's still actually locked in, let's see what we get now. We're gonna get just over 19 inches. On the back side here, before we go to the coolest part of the whole saw, which I can't wait to talk about, uh, we have our dust port right here. Now this does come equipped with not only a bag, uh, but obviously you can hook this up to your standard dust extractor. And then here we have our Allen wrench for quick blade changes. And I do want to mention the capacity of the miter gauge. You have different detents at your standard measurements, but we do have the ability to go all the way to 70 both directions. Now to get into what I think is just the coolest part about this entire tool, and that is this digital screen and this knob. Now there's a couple of things that I'll bring your attention to right off the bat. We have our battery power right here at the top. It shows me how full each one of my batteries is. We have the blade height, we have the blade angle. And then what you see over here are a bunch of different presets that can all be changed, um, which would be really beneficial for somebody who maybe has to cut certain angles on molding or something over and over and over again, but they have different setups, you could basically go to any one of these and quickly access those presets. If I wanna raise the blade, I come here, I turn this, and that's the max height that I can go, 49.8 millimeters. And then to lower it, I just simply turn the other direction. If I wanna to go to 45 degrees, I just turn the knob until I reach 45 degrees. Now, what if I wanted to go back to zero and raise my blade to 30 millimeters? Well, I can go to my preset and I can hold this button down and the motor is going to go back exactly to 30 degrees in height and zero degrees. Now, this blade operates off two different servo motors, basically. And one thing that I really think is cool is right now I currently have it set to 20 millimeters. Watch what happens as I start to go to 45. Pay attention to the height of the blade. See how it looks like it's jumping up? 
Well, it is, and the reason for that is because when you change the angle, it will automatically compensate for whatever height you need to cut. So as I go back to zero, you can see the blade now going lower. Zoom down a little bit here so you can see what I'm about to show you. Let's go ahead and raise the blade up just because you'll be able to visually see the angle a little bit better. So I can go right 47.4, that's the max, and I can go left 10.4. So this is a dual bevel table saw. It can go, it doesn't have the same capacity both directions, but it does have some capacity to the left, max capacity to the right. Down here, what we have is the park position, and this would be the position that you would put it in if you're going to store it. Now, raising the blade up and down in full increments isn't where it stops. Uh, actually, if I want to change the angle, it doesn't just go in full degrees. What you can do is you can hold the button down and now I can raise or lower the blade in 0.1 millimeter increments for this scenario because I'm using metric. So if I wanted to be 30.4, I absolutely could. Now the same thing applies to the angles. If I needed to cut 10.5, I'm just gonna hold this down and turn it until it's at 10.5. I'm not gonna get super in the weeds on this because Festival has great videos, Sedge has done uh, Festival Live showing all of this stuff, but if I wanna get to the menu, I can play, uh, tap this button twice and it takes me there. So there's a few different things that you can do in here and we're not gonna get into the specifics, but if we have uh, different material, we need to slow the speed down, we can do that here. Uh, to change the blade, we have a, a process that walks you through that here. Calibrate the cutting height, first thing you do when you get your new machine. Calibrate your cutting angle. Also, it'll walk you through all of this when you get the machine. It's very easy to do. And some other options. It does give you the ability to switch between imperial and metric, and then you can reset it back to factory settings. You also have the ability to change the language if you want to. All right, now let's have some fun and make some cuts with this thing, because I know that that's what everybody really wants to see. So while I'm hooking up my dust extraction, I want to talk about um, one thing that I get a lot of questions about anytime it comes to a battery operated tool, and that is what's the battery life? I got it a lot on the miter saw, uh, I've gotten it a lot on the track saw, and I'm not gonna do a long drawn out test for this because I don't feel like those tests are worthwhile for two reasons. One, it doesn't matter what I cut, people are not gonna be happy with what I cut, and two, it, it all depends on what I cut to determine how long the battery is going to last, whether I'm turning the machine on and off, whether I'm cutting three quarter material or inch and a half material, whether it's hardwood or a softwood. So doing that doesn't really give anybody an idea. I'll say the same thing that I said about the miter saw and the track saw. Here's the deal. If you're buying one of these, you are buying this because you are already in the Festool cordless ecosystem, which means you have batteries. If you buy this and you get the energy set, you'll get the dual charger. The batteries take 30 minutes to charge. If you have a spare set of batteries, you're never gonna be in a situation where you just don't have any battery power left to continue to run the saw. So I know that might not be super helpful to everybody, but that's just the reality. I'm gonna start by doing a quick rip cut on this scrap plywood that I have. Now, when you're aligning the fence, the fence itself doesn't have like a you know little line or anything like that to reference over the numbers. What you use is actually the edge of the fence. So we're gonna cut these at, we'll just say three and three quarter, and we'll make a rip, and then we can try doing some mitered stuff. Now, as you would expect, like any festival item, the dust collection on this is, is very good, but it leaves a very, very clean, smooth, smooth cut. This will be as close as I can get you on this one, and it's kind of hard to pick up on a, on a video anyways, but very, very smooth, excellent cut quality, and the blade that is in there right now is the uh, standard blade that comes on it. It's not a ripping blade. Another common question that I had received was how is the fence? It looks, you know, small. It is small. It's a very, very small fence. However, 
they always want to know if it has any deflection. And one thing that's cool is that this particular fence has a latch on the far side. So when you place this in there and you lock it down, it's pulling it into both sides so you don't get that deflection. Now I'm gonna put this at 45. We'll do a couple of cuts here and test it. And again, it compensated for the height of the blade based on the material thickness that I'm using and how high I said I needed the cut to be. Instead of cutting the angle on the other one, I figure I might as well just go ahead and use the sliding table. So here I'm just testing the accuracy of the angled blade. And right there, it's perfectly 90, these two pieces together. Now I've got my miter gauge set to 45. We're gonna go ahead and cut this one. And one thing that I did want to show here is that if you don't feel comfortable holding it with your hand, and of course, you know, things can slide, it does have the ability to put a clamp on your material, just like this. So now I can make sure my hands stay far away from the blade. Let's go ahead and make this cut. Put this together here and check the outside edge. I think it'll be more visible. And we have a perfect 90 degree miter. Now, up until this point, I've had this sitting up on my work surface um, on purpose. Uh, this is not the only configuration. You can buy it in this configuration and just get the saw itself and use it on whatever surface you want. But I'm gonna show you another option here in just a moment. But before I do that, there's something important that I wanna highlight and that is you can basically see that the dust collection on this is just as effective as just about any other festival product, which obviously doesn't come as that big of a surprise. But I have very little blowback on me. I have very little on the surface itself. Um, so that's great because if you're gonna be using this on a job site specifically, obviously you wanna make sure that you leave a clean environment. And this is gonna fit the bill just like any other festival stuff. Before I show you an alternate setup, I did wanna point out that it does have a riving knife and it also does have the capability of using a riving knife with blade guard combination and that is stored in the lid. Now let's talk about the little work table and also dolly basically uh, for this table saw and that is right here. So typically you would have your table saw sitting down on top of it, can be strapped in, but this is gonna be a work table and also a support for off cuts. So in order to open this up, it's very simple. Put down these legs, put these legs out, flip it up just like this. Now this right here can actually be stored flat if you wanted to and have it be a work surface, or you can put it up. This is going to act as an outfeed support um, or a support to the side. And let me show you what I'm talking about. It's amazing to me just how light this saw actually feels when you're moving it around. Now I can place it on this work surface and on here you'll see these uh, circular cutouts. Those align with some feet that are on the bottom. So now it is locked in. So in this configuration, if I was ripping a long board and pushing it through, this right here would act as my support. Just to give you an idea, a visual representation of what I'm talking about. Right there, I now have outfeed support for my materials so when I go through, they don't just automatically fall down. Now that's not the only support that it could be because the saw can be turned in this configuration as well. Again, making sure that I'm locked down. And if I was doing large cross cuts, I could do so because now I have the support to the left, if I need to remove my fence, I absolutely can. And I can proceed to go through and make my cross cuts and I have support on the right side of the blade as well as the left side of the blade. Now I know if I don't do something like cut some really thick hardwood, <laughs> then the comments are gonna light up because I didn't show that. So what I'm gonna do here is this is just a scrap piece of eight quarter uh, walnut from a previous project. So. I've got the blade raised to uh, almost the max height 
Um, and I'm gonna cut through this in one pass. I'm gonna show you guys uh, the quality and I also want you to listen as it makes the cut. Here's a close-up shot of that cut edge. Um, we see a little minor teeth marks, um, but I, what I really want to point out is just how effortlessly it made that cut and did not bog down the motor at all. So it is a very, very capable table saw. Now, what do I see myself using this for? Well, I've already used it on multiple projects or things that I needed done inside of my house for projects that I'm working on right now. Being able to go and set this up when I do my bathroom remodel is gonna be fantastic to cut different materials while I'm doing that. Um, it being quiet, have good dust collection. I mean, it's great and I don't even go to job sites. My job site is my house, but this is going to come in very handy. Now for the argument of, could this be a table saw that I have in my home shop? And that's a really difficult question to answer um, just because it's not going to give you uh, the size capacity that many other saws will because it's not meant to be a standalone table saw in your workshop. Could you get by if you had a track saw? Yeah, of course you could. But again, it is a small package. It is designed to be portable. It is designed to have amazing capabilities, especially for its size. Um, but I'll go back to what I said about the cordless track saw, cordless um, miter saw, and that is if you're like 90% of people that are in a garage for maybe, let's say, a rental, and you have one outlet and you can't add any because your landlord will not allow you to do that, cordless tools make a lot more sense. It, I, I think that we're so far past that well, I don't ever work on a job site. Why would I have cordless tools? Or I don't need cordless tools. I'd much rather have power. Well, not everybody has the luxury of power everywhere in their shop. Not everybody wants to move from one plug, uh, from one extension cord to another, to another, to another. It, it just gets annoying. So in situations like that, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. If you have a really tiny workshop and it's down in your basement, um, it may not be a bad idea uh, to have this, right? So do I think, like, would it replace my table saw? No, of course not, because I have the space and I have a large table saw that has much more capacity. Um, but can I take that one in my house? No. Can I throw that one in the back of my truck? No. Can I take this upstairs? Absolutely. So those are my thoughts on this. Hopefully you guys found that helpful. At the end of the day, it's a fantastic machine. It really is. And to be honest with you, I was quite surprised by the price. So I'll give you the low price and the high price depending on the configuration that you're gonna get. If you get the whole setup that I showed you uh, that comes with the batteries, charger, table saw, uh, the stand, everything, it's $19.99. If you just want the saw, you don't need the batteries, you don't need the stand, then it's $14.99. So for me looking at it as somebody who's been buying Festival for years, when I saw those prices, I was pretty surprised because I just assumed that they would have been much higher than that. So good on them for getting it at a much lower price point than what I think a lot of people expected. That will do it for this video. See you next time.